Hevenu Shalom Alehem. We bring peace unto you in the native Hebrew language of my Lord and Savior, Yahshua Mashiach, the man called Jesus Christ. Today's video is going to be one of the most important ones I've ever had to make. And I hope that for those of you that are on the fence still about this topic, you'll have open hearts and open minds to receive this message. Because after this, the only thing I can do is pray for you. You are now watching The Conservative Racer. Remember, the race is not over until Christ returns. Sometimes, life can get you down. But it doesn't have to anymore. Now, there's Numera. Numera is a prescription drug specifically formulated that kills pain at the source, your body. The secret lies in our patented technology. Numera attacks every sensation right when it forms, ensuring you never feel a thing again. Do what you love without pain. Sit on a fence. Make bad decisions. Start smiling again. Get back to life. Side effects may include blurred vision, nausea, dizziness, upset stomach, dry mouth, loss of memory, constipation, explosive diarrhea, unwanted pregnancy, leprosy, and sudden death. So funny. <laughs> Numera, because pills are easier. Proverbs 25.2 It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Did you hear that? It literally brings glory to God to seek out understanding and knowledge and to understand things of this world which relate to God's word. Now let's turn to Hosea and find out what it says about people who do not seek out knowledge and understanding. Turn to Hosea 4.6 and it reads, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. What does it say again? My people are hurt? No. My people are destroyed. Listen, let's stop and pray for a moment. Heavenly Father, in John 8.32, you explain that truth will set us free. And right now I rebuke the lies of Satan and pray everyone listening will receive your truth and be set free from the bondage of this wicked world system. And I praise you, Lord, and give you all the glory in Jesus' precious name, amen. So we're gonna begin this lesson with a quick story about Daniel and King Hezekiah, but before I do that, uh, let me give you the breakdown of the topics that we're gonna be discussing uh, today. Uh, we're gonna talk about the world and how Satan is the ruler of it. We're gonna talk about the wicked people of this world the Bible explains them as the merchants, the great men of this earth. We're going to talk about the people of this world. And we're going to talk about how we are made in the image of God and how Satan wants to take that image and turn it into his own DNA. So, but actually, before we begin, let me go ahead and quote some of these great men of the earth as the Bible explains them. We have Moderna scientists. Uh, funded by Bill Gates bragging about using mRNA to quote unquote hack the kingdom of life and then we have the president of Moderna saying uh, Stefan Hoog Stefan Hoog he's quoted as saying if you could hack the rules of mRNA essentially the entire kingdom of life is available for you to play with I don't know about any of you, but that all sounds like a warning to me. And I don't want any of the great merchants that the Bible explains hacking my temple or playing with the life that God breathed into me. And I'm here today to tell you that we're actually hacking the software of life and that it's changing the way we think about prevention and treatment of disease. So here's all the biology you need to know in 30 seconds. Our body is made out of organs. Our organs are made out of cells. And in every cell, there's this thing called messenger RNA, or mRNA for short, that transmits the critical information from the DNA, our genes, to the protein, which 
is really the stuff we're all made out of. This is the critical information that determines what a cell will actually do. And so we think of it like an operating system. And so let's get into the quick story about Daniel. Uh, in the story of Daniel and King Hezekiah, we have Daniel uh, refusing to take certain foods and things into his body being offered by the king that he knew would defile his body because Daniel knew that his body was the temple of God. And we find here in Daniel and Daniel 1, 8, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies nor with the wine which he drank. In 1 Corinthians, it teaches us what Daniel already knew. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? You see, Daniel understood that we're created in the image of God and the Spirit of God dwells within us. And Satan, his main goal is to defile, pollute, poison, and destroy that temple. He wants to make us over into his image. And so, if you could actually change that, which we call the software of life, if you could introduce a line of code or change a line of code, it turns out that has profound implications for everything. Since I began my channel three months ago, I found that one of the hardest things for me to do in convincing people about what's going on in the world and trying to share God's word with people in relation to what's going on in the world is that people tend to believe that the powers and rulers and the merchants, the great men of this earth, as the Bible calls them, are here for our best interests. People believe that if they trust in the things that the world offers, the solutions and all of the teachings and philosophies of this world, that they'll be led into that perfect life that they're looking for. When in actuality, the truth is that in all things in our life, we're to lean on God, we're to trust in his word, we're to look for God's understanding of everything. We're to filter everything that goes on in our life through the word of God. And when we talk about the, as the Bible says, the great men of this earth, the merchants, uh, sometimes I refer to them as globalists or the, the elite, the leaders of this uh, world. Uh, these people are all under the enemy. These people are all under Satan. Uh, you can look at their history and their actions and the things they believe, the things they teach, and then filter that through the word of God. God clearly tells us that we can judge a, a tree by the fruit it bears. And these people bear bad fruit. And anybody that doesn't see that is just in denial. So let's talk about their leader. Uh, sometimes the Bible refers to him as the prince of this world. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it talks about him as the ruler of this world. Uh, and when we talk about the ruler of this world, uh, Satan, we're talking about, we're talking about, he's responsible for the ideas, philosophies, education, he's responsible for commerce, false religions, uh, false doctrines, false ideology, uh, world deceptions, and yes, he's also responsible for world health. But I digress, uh, let's save that for the end and let's take a step back for a minute and actually read that verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I don't know about you all, but I don't wanna be blind. And sadly, most of the people out there that are, aren't even aware that they don't see. And I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to go through this world without the grace and the glory of God on me. When I was preparing and studying for this uh, video, I spent time in the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel is an end times book that points us to God's choice blessings uh, for his people in the last days. And I want that. I received that. And we just have to trust. We have to trust in God's word 
And we have to stop trusting in everything that the world is saying to us. We have to lean on God for understanding. Uh, we have to trust in the Lord so much that we no longer trust ourselves. Because at the point that we no longer trust ourselves, that means we're believing only in what God says and he will be able to fill us with his Holy Spirit and we'll be led into all truth. So with all that being said, let me go ahead and wrap this up in Revelation 18, 23. Uh, this is the main point of this entire video and I need you to pay careful attention to the ending of this verse. Revelation 18, 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. There's so much here, I hardly know where to begin. And I think earlier I mentioned, I can't imagine what it would be like if the grace and the glory of God wasn't upon me. We're called to be the light in this world. So could you imagine if all at once there was no more light being shined on a darkened world? And who exactly are the merchants, the great men of this earth? And what exactly are the sorceries that they use to deceive all nations. How many nations? Some of them? No, all of the nations of the world will be deceived. So who are these merchants, these great men of the earth? And what was the sorcery that they used to deceive? In the Greek, sorceries is translated as pharmakia. In the Strong's Concordance, it's defined as medicine, drugs, spells. Oh yes, Big Pharma. My suggestion to everyone is to stop leaning on the word of the world and start leaning on the word of God.